Okay, so we're here at Good Springs, Nevada. This is a really cool little town. And um, this used to be the cutoff between Salt Lake City and LA. And the guys would bring their horses here and cattle and everything, they'd water them here. There was water that used to actually come out of the ground here, probably turn of the century. Um, I've got an old friend here that um, has been here, well, he was born here. His mom was born here in 1919. So there's some really cool history. Good Springs, what it was is it was actually a place where they used to mine uh, lead for World War I. And then later on they started uh, getting silver out of the ground and zinc and then they started using all this stuff and you know it created the silver state. Um, this is just one of the towns here in Nevada that was kind of a booming town at one time. Um, since then it's burned down but what hasn't burned down is the old school. The school's been here since 1913. The bar down the street right here I want to believe was put there in 1909. Um, so it's pretty cool to have this bus that's a 1935 international school bus. So you figure in 1935, if you lived in this town, we wouldn't be on an asphalt road. It would all be dirt. So this bus never seen an asphalt road probably until it was wore out, right? So what was really cool is we at Welder Up um, went through this bus, completely redid it. Um, it's a Wayne bus is what they call it. So you had Bluebird and then you had Wayne. and um, the history on Wayne, it's really interesting. So back in the old days, in the 1800s, um, Wayne started building wood-burning stoves for people out of metal, okay? And what they would do is they would have to, you know, deliver them to the people's ranches or farms, right? Or wherever they were. Well, then they started building wagons with a team of horses to deliver this heavy stove or piece of iron out to wherever it was. Well, after they got busy with building um, the stoves, the buggy thing started taking off and they started building buggies, which then later on turned into school buses. And um, it's a really kind of a cool history on it. But the neat thing about it is, is how many kids do you think sitting on the side of the road in the 1930s were sitting there on some dirty road just waiting for this cool school bus to come by? Okay, let's talk about the goodies about the old school bus. So first of all, what we thought we'd do is, you know, when we got this bus, it had a late model chassis. Somebody had already started on it. So we went ahead and finished it off. It had like a, I would say mid eighties, one ton Chevy dually front suspension in it. So the cool thing about this bus is what we wanted to do is put a, a rear end in it with a gear in it that would actually go down the highway good because we're going to put air conditioning in this thing and we want to make it comfortable. Okay, it was built to haul our fans around and family and friends and we want it to be comfortable. You want to get in this thing and everybody's having fun cruising down the road. But the power plant's really important. So the power plant on this thing is a six cylinder Cummins diesel. It's a P-pump 12 valve. Um, it probably makes 450 horse. It's got three industrial injection turbos on it. It's got a big industrial injection P-pump on it um, and it runs so good. With all that horsepower, we put a fast pump on it so we could deliver the right amount of fuel to this pump and make clean, good horsepower. Um, the thing that's really nice about these turbos on this, on this old bus is it doesn't roll a bunch of coal. It's a good, clean burner. It makes really good mileage. I mean, going down the road, I'll bet this thing is making 18 miles the gallon to 20. And another thing that helps the mileage on this thing is the fact that it has a manual six-speed out of an 01 Dodge two-wheel drive truck okay um, that six speed really is a nice transmission to get on the road the gears are really nice and tight on it so it's always in its power band all the time I mean don't don't think that this thing won't rock you into the back of the bus I mean if you romp on the throttle you're gonna roll to the back of the bus and it, it is it does make a ton of power and good torque so then I got these sick American Force wheels on this baby 20 inch wheels rolls down the highway really good actually this thing probably about probably about 80 miles an hour is when it starts to catch the wind a little bit and it moves around but at 70 75 miles an hour this bus just cruises down the road so let's just talk about the cool factor what the bus looks like so this bus since 1935 has never been painted okay this is original paint that was on the bus now from my understanding i think the bus originally came out of california somewhere and it's probably right um 
It was probably high desert. I mean, it's in good shape. There's no rust in this bus, none. None in the floors, not in the rockers. Like it was really, really in good shape. But if you can look at, like I put these little gauges and stuff on here because I just thought it was really cool like that. When you pull up, this is, this is eye level to the window, right? It just gives somebody something to look at. You know what I mean? Does it make any sense? Not really. But it's something to look at. It's actually got fluid still in it. This thing's gotta be probably 80 years old too. Um, now, the bus windows are actually a modern bus window that was in it, but we just worked with it because somebody was on their way of trying to do this bus at some point in its life, and I just wanted to leave them because I thought, you know what? They work, they go up and down, let's just leave it. Um, we added a few things like these reflectors I added to it because I thought the reflectors would be really cool. These are old. These are probably right around the same era, maybe even older. Um, they're just little reflectors. They're like little marbles inside there. And you can, you know, when you put your headlights on them, they'll, they'll reflect. Um, when we brought the bus in, Travis and I decided that we would put a little bit more of a patina look to the bus. And you can see that it's just got a little bit more orange in it and a little bit just to kind of bring out the pop in it. You know what I mean? We really wanted it to stand out. And it definitely does that. It's a beautiful bus. I love the way that it looks. The top on this thing is an original rusty old top on the bus. It's really cool looking. So what we did is we actually used the original gas tank entryway here. The tank that's in it is not the original tank because of course it was rotten when we got it. But there's a new tank in there and this is our filler right here. But you can see the, the craftsmanship that they put into this filler. I mean, isn't that cool? Like that was really neat. You got to think back in 1935, this bus maybe went 35 miles an hour. You know, maybe 45 miles an hour tops. And a lot of times they're on dirt roads. So I mean, you know, they couldn't go real fast. You know what I mean? So they wore out pretty quick, but I mean, look at the grill shell. It looks good. I mean, these headlights look really cool. These are not the original headlights. I'm not even sure if these are off an old Buick or uh, maybe a Cadillac because they're, but I, I, I love headlights. I love the look of big headlights. It really stands out the front of the vehicle, especially with these little tiny narrow grill shells. These big headlights really stand out and it fits the era. These are probably right around the same era as the bus. 1935, they still had big headlights. Probably from the 20s, late 20s, these were really popular. Okay, so here's a few of the features on this thing that you don't think really work, but what's kind of funny is a lot of this stuff works. So we set this, this is a, basically a, a, off a steam temperature gauge. I mean, it goes up to 350 degrees or something like that but it's actually hooked up to the water system on the truck. So you can, you can get out and you can see that the thermostat's up to about 110 degrees right now. So it, it, this actually works. You can feel the heat and the water's actually flowing through here to show the temperature. We wanted things to work on it. You know what I mean? That's kind of half the deal. And then you can see here that all these gauges right here are actually hooked up to our boost. So this will actually show boost when you're going down the road. If you actually stand on it, it'll pull boost on this gauge. You can't see it from inside, but it's just cool that it's actually hooked up. It's really neat. Okay, let's talk about the inside. There's so much detail on the inside, it's gonna take a while, but that was what I really wanted to do when we started creating this bus, is I wanted it to be so busy in here that people could just sit in here and stare at things, and every time they look somewhere, there's something new, something different, you know, and really, Attention to detail is something that I really love because you can just keep looking, you know, and looking and looking and finding new things. Even I, I built this thing and I get in it and I walk around and I'm like, I can't believe all this stuff's in here. I forget sometimes what's in here. Um, but when uh, all the welder up crew was in the shop on Vegas rat rods, putting this bus together, it was a hundred and probably 10 degrees outside. We literally had a, a port -a cool right here blowing cold air in the bus because we spent so much time in here. It was very hot. Um, we were all on top of each other in here doing different projects and trying to get this thing done. Um, but it, it was a lot of work. This bus was a ton of work. But let's get to some of the details. So some of the steam gauges in here I think are just really cool. They give it um, that, that steampunk feel and that old look. This one's hooked up to the brakes so you can actually see it when you hit the brakes it goes up and we put it right here. So if you're sitting on the bus and you're just looking at stuff and every time I hit the brakes, that gauge pops up, it's kind of neat. So it's set up on a hydraulic. We got this old fire extinguisher in here from probably around the 1920s 
you know, it's a really neat, it, I don't even know if it works, but it looks cool. Um, so, you know, open and closing the bus door. We, there was nothing here to open and close this, the, the door to the bus. And, you know, this is always like the cool part of the school bus, you know, when you got on the bus, the old bus driver would open the door, poof, you know, get on the bus. Well, this right here is an old drill. So you used to hold it and you could drill holes before power. Basically, this thing could be 1800s, okay? Um, all the way up into probably the 20s and 30s when old farmers and ranchers and stuff out there didn't really have power out to somewhere. They had these old drills still. I thought it looked perfectly just like the lever that you would open the bus door. So when I seen it, I was like, oh, that's perfect. And the uh, now the rod here that actually opens and closes the door is a drag link out of a Model A Ford, okay? Um, I cut the little ball joints off right here off the front of the Ford and I welded them onto here. I welded them onto the door and put a little bend in it. So it, um, so it carries over, right? You know what I mean? So you can open the door and it swings it out and it locks. Okay. That's why I put this little bend in there because it gets out of the way. And if you walk on the bus, it doesn't hit you. These are narrow. They're for little kids. So a lot of adults that want to get on this bus, you got to watch your head. You don't bunk your head and, um, you know, so you can get in here. But once you get in the bus, it just, it turns into a different world. I mean, I've got bird nests in here. I got birds. I got moss. Um, we got, um, we got a really, really cool, st uh, stereo system in here. So sitting in the bus, you know, we got our blinkers. Um, the, the shifter is a double barrel shotgun and, um, it, <laughs> You know, back in the old days, I mean, the bus drivers carried guns with them. You know what I mean? You just never knew. Like, you got this little one right here. Look at this baby. Oh, yeah. This is an old, old cap gun. Remember the cap guns? Oh, these were cool, right? I remember take, having my grandma take me to the store all the time, give me a cap gun. And then those little plastic caps used to put in them, and then they had the paper ones. Remember the paper ones that were in the roll? Those were really cool. Actually, this is a paper one. So, that little, that little teat right there we would put the paper roll and then you'd run it up in there and then every time you pulled it back it would roll it in and cap gun that's cool isn't that cool that's when that's when times were good nowadays you can't even have cool stuff like this it almost feels like a real gun you know but shit everybody got crying so anyway um if you look at the the the, the panel on here this is the the window it actually rolls up and down here's the window um, here's an air pump. This is an old vintage air pump. So you could, you know, you, you get a flat tire, you can get out and pump your tire up, right? Um, the gauge or the uh, the instrument panel here for my switches <coughs> is very confusing. But here's all my fuses down here. Okay, this is an old fuse panel. We reused it. And I got these little switches that turn the ignition on, turns the stereo on turns the air conditioning on because things got air on it so it's really nice that when you get in this thing you have all your stuff here it's a little confusing sometimes because i get in this thing after i haven't drove it forever and i can't remember which is which so i just flip switches till it starts starts up so anyway it's really cool um these old these are old spark plugs that are probably out of an old model a i just stuck them in there because like if in 1935 when you had an old school bus like this you figure by 1945 um this bus would have been 10 years old probably had some wear and tear on it and you know guys would want to carry you know school bus drivers there's no cell phones there's no radios you're out on country roads picking kids up from here to there and if your bus breaks down you got to fix it right so a lot of the stuff i just put some tools in here and i mean i don't know a bus driver that didn't drink probably back in those days either so I wanted to put a bottle in here like, you know, represents, look, if you had to deal with a bunch of screaming kids on a bus, you'd be drinking too. So for sure, you know the bus drivers are drinking. Extra oil, because you know these things had oil issues and probably burned oil like crazy. We got this old gun right here, another little 22 I found that was like in a fire or something. But it's just cool, you know. Guns were a big part of our country back in 1935. That's how people ate their food. Um, you know, all the, we got, well, if you, you open it up in here, you can see the amps are down in here. We got the batteries right here. Okay. So all the stereo amps are down in there. 
all the seats were just leftover um, stuff that Junior's upholstery put together for me. My buddy Junior, um, I told him, I said, hey, I want to take all the material that we've used over the years for different car builds and just use it up because this was on my budget building this bus. So I wanted to make sure that we used up what we had. So we just used up all the different materials in here, our uh, materials of our uh, fabric that we had left over. We got luggage just in case, you know, we got luggage on the bus back here. So there's a couple other back here. And then we got a back door. So, you know, if you wanted to get out, you could jump off the back of the bus. You know what I mean? It's pretty cool that the door is still here and it actually works, but it's still solid. I mean, think about it. 1935. I just shut that door and it shuts so solid. It's awesome. Um, I put this old exit way out sign and um, some wrenches and all this little teeny tiny little things that like, you know, you would think you'd need spark plugs and lights, maybe a gauge and a few things. I mean, I don't know why you would need a bird, but the good thing about it is this bus is a 1935 and I guarantee you, it probably sat somewhere for 40 or 50 years and birds and every kind of animal probably lived in it. So I just kind of wanted to bring the nature back in the bus. But the roof's all um, hush matted so we can keep the sounds of the stereo really crisp and clean in here um, and it doesn't bong around not only that but the ceiling in the summertime gets really hot so we had to barrier it with something but all the windows had we did some trim around them put these big rivets in it we got these little hangers on here so you can hang your coats like kids would have got on the bus and hung their coats on there so i mean really it does have all the things that you would need it's got air conditioning in it so all underneath the seats down here is all air conditioning. It's got LED strips on it. So when you walk in at night, you can actually see where you're going and what's going on. Um, but you know what? For the most part, the bus is just really cool. When you have 10 or 15 people on this bus, it's a party. It's a lot of fun. But one of the most important parts about having fun with your friends is the music. Anytime you're in a party or you're having fun, the music is a big part of it. So we're going to go to Vegas. And I'm going to show you what the system in this thing really does. Hey guys, I'm over here at the Beat Clinic. My buddy Harry is installing some badass bass in my 1935 International bus. Now look, I grew up in the late 80s and all through the 90s and it was all about bass. And um, you know, nowadays it just seems like they don't care about it like they used to. And um, But I still love it. I love lots of bass. I like to have a good system in my ride. So let's go in here and check out what he's doing on this bus. What's up, man? What's going on, man? It's good, good, good. We're getting How going. How we doing, man? We're almost ready to hear some beats, huh? Yeah. You got it so it'll play, huh? In a minute, it will. Yeah. Be. Yeah. You got a little. Uh, what are you doing under there, homie? Uh, putting hush mat keeps the vibration down underneath your dash. Ah. It'll vibrate, that's for sure. Oh, it's a rattle. <laughs> so, what do we do for a system in this thing, Harry? Uh, what do we do? What do we put in this thing? So we've got two kicker L7s, 12s, ported under the back seat. Eight, six and a half, two tweeters, two amps. It's nasty. I haven't heard it run yet, but I want to hear this thing. Because what we're, our goal is, is when we're cruising down the strip, see back when we were kids, we used to get tickets for too much bass. Like literally they'd pull yeah. you over and give you a ticket for too much bass. Well now, you know, things have changed. Most people buy a car that has bass in it yeah. and it kind of sucks. It's not like this. So what we want to do is see if we can still get tickets. Yeah, of course. You know, we'll yeah. bring it, we'll bring it back. You know what I mean? The cops that are out there nowadays are so young that they probably didn't know that we used to get bass tickets. Exactly. <laughs> so we're going to go down the strip and have some fun and see if we can bump the roof off this bump thing. The, roof so. off. the first part of the build was the sub box we built for 212s. And then we ported it through the side that comes under the seat. Um, what is the difference between the round, you know, traditional solo round barrack and then the square? Deeper, deeper base. Oh, really? Yeah, deeper base. Nice. Yeah, those things are going to get, they, they pound. So we started with the box and then we started with the back panels. We did two six and a halves in each panel. And then we did two side ones. We, did, we built all out of fiberglass and then the kick panels. It was a, it was pretty fun building though. It's a lot of work. Yeah. So what, what happened with the roof? Because you said it was bumping really, so it was just rattling. So when we first fired it up, it was snowing rust. It was just <laughs> coming down. We're like, I'm sitting there and it's like falling all over me. And we're like, yeah, we got to do something about that. So we put hush mat on the whole roof to dampen the sound, so the vibrations and 
Hide all that rust. <laughs> it looks good too. It, it actually looks pretty good in there. I thought, I didn't think it was gonna look that good, but it don't look bad. Yeah, it doesn't it look really bad does. at all. Kind of looks disco in there now. Yeah, put a little ball in there. Yeah. 